Leak Carl Nasman is in Dubai for us. Carl. Yeah, you know, that really is being looked at as a bit of a breakthrough, at least giving some positive momentum already on day one of this climate conference. And to be honest, that is a bit of a rarity. You often don't see a big announcement so early in a COP summit, but there you go. A lot of that focus, of course, is on adaptation, how to pay the countries that are on the front lines and already dealing with the effects of climate change. And one person who knows a lot about that is Patrick Fercoyan. He's the CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation. Thank you so much for joining us. I, of course, wanted to start off by asking you about your reaction to what we saw, the news of, of that loss and damage fund being approved and already millions of dollars being pledged. Well, Carl, obviously that's great news on day one of, uh, of the summit. But the big question is this, is this an epic outcome or is this a pyrrhic victory? Global leaders from the South are arriving today here in Dubai, particularly from Africa. And their question is, well, what about adaptation? It's great to invest in loss and damage. They have asked for this for many, many years. More needs to be done. But two years ago, during a similar climate summit in Glasgow, the international community promised to double adaptation finance, which is nowhere there. So African leaders say, well, we need to already have financing to address the climate impacts of today. Would it be not better, Carl, that we prevent the impact as opposed to pay afterwards? In fact, we need to do both. But African leaders in particular have very high um, expectations for adaptation finance to come through as well. Now, just as countries have to put forward a plan to limit their emissions, there are also something called national adaptation plans. Talk to us a bit about that. How many countries have them and are they adequate enough? Yeah, so these so-called national adaptation plans, de facto, what are they? They just indicate what a country wants to do. Let's say drought-tolerant uh, crops, resilient infrastructure, building ports differently. So these countries have these plans. But again, here, the big problem is they're not funded. That is why countries here, heads of state, Bill Gates, others are coming. They say, you know what, this has to change. We need to go from talk to action. And that is why most countries here are coming with so-called compacts, adaptation compacts. What are they called? They're investment roadmaps, where countries such as Kenya say as well, actually our top five priorities is this. We will do our own investment in one, two, three. But you international community, you have to come through on the other promises. And the reality in the dark clouds here in Dubai, of course, is the Ukraine crisis, the Israel-Palestine war. Right. Lots of sort of conflicts and crisis asking for attention. Where is climate on this? Well, at the losing end of the stick, I would say. And that needs to be rectified. When you talk about adaptation on the ground, what does that mean specifically? Obviously, it could be different by, by countries, but what are we talking about here? Well, in essence, adaptation, of course, is a complicated word, but it is about people. It's about doing development differently. It is about a smallholder farmer in Kusumu, Kenya, using drought-tolerant crops because the, the rains are not coming. It is about a mother in Bangladesh who takes her children out of harm's way to a cyclone shelter because of the incoming typhoons. So there is these very practical interventions which has to be done. It's being done at the moment. These adaptation interventions are taking place. But the big problem, Carl, is it's not at the scale and speed required. So we need a step change on adaptation. And quite frankly, the promise of two years ago has to be fulfilled by the international community. Very briefly, we have about 30 seconds left. I know you'll be co-hosting an event with African leaders today on adaptation and finance. Tell us a bit more about that. So today, African leaders come, and they come with a couple of things. One, with a big plan, an Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. Because very often, let's say, people from the north say, well, you don't have your, your, your house in order. Well, actually, they do. They come with a plan. They have their investment needs. They put their own money on the table. And what they expect from the international community partner with African nations. It's good for Africa, but what is good for Africa is good for the world. Patrick Fercoyan, the CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation. Clearly uh, still a lot of issues to be addressed here. We're only on day two of 13 days here in Dubai, so should be some interesting discussions going forward.